Hey everyone, welcome back. Now in this tutorial, we'll look at the contains and contains all methods of our ArrayList class. But before we proceed, I'll just move this student class to a separate file so that we can reuse it in different examples. Okay. Now, uh, since all of our classes or files are in the same package, we can still access the student class, but I'll just move it to a separate file. Okay. So I'll just right click on this and click on new class student and now I'll just copy this content from here and paste it over here. Okay. So our student class is now moved to a separate file, right? And from here, I'll just delete this. Okay. Yes. Now over here, I'll create two array list of student. So this is student list one. Now let's add some student objects to it. Let's say S1, S2 and S3. Now I'll create another array list of student and that is student list two. Now again, I'll add some student objects to it. Let's say S4, S3 again and S6. Okay. Now I'll just print the data of uh, both of these array lists. So this is for student list one. Now again, I have used the for each loop over here. And similarly, this is for student list two. Right now, first we'll try the contains method. Okay. So first I'll just uh, print a simple statement on screen that is contains. And then I'll say system dot out dot print ln student list one dot contains. And here I'm passing a student object to it. Okay. So this will return a Boolean value, right? So if student list one contains this particular student, then it will return true else it will return false. Okay. Now by looking at our student list one, we can see that this particular student is present in this list. Okay. So it should return true. Now let's save this program and run it. Okay. So this is our list one. This is our list two, and this is the result of our contains operation. Okay. So it has returned true. Okay. So it is working fine. Now again, this is working properly because we have overridden the equals method in our student class. Okay. So if we don't override the equals method, then this will not work. Okay. And now let's uh, change the roll number over here to some other value and see what we get as the output. Now, as uh, the uniqueness of our student object is depending uh, only on the roll number, there is no need to change uh, the name. Okay. But we're just changing it. Okay. But even if you change the roll number, uh, it is fine because our uniqueness is depending on the roll number. Okay. So at the time of overriding the equals method, we had selected only roll number, right? So yeah, that's it. Now let's run this program. And yes, we are getting the output as false. Okay. Because this particular student is not present in our student list one. Now let's try the second method and that is contains all. Now this contains all method, it takes a collection as a parameter. Okay. So here, instead of the student object, we can pass student list two. Okay. So if student list one contains all elements of student list two, then this will return true else it will return false. Now, if you look at both of our list, then uh, we just have one common element in both of them. Okay. Which is S3. Okay, so this should return false. Now let's run this. And yes, it is working fine. Now what I'll do is I'll just change the roll numbers of our student list two to match student list one. Okay, so we have 101, we have 103 and we have 102. Now I'll also change the names. Okay, because it doesn't look good. Okay. Yes. And now it should return true. And yes, it is working fine. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you for watching and see you in my next tutorial.